It's five, and we're live. Welcome to Frankly Speaking, where truth is always our mission, rally our realm. Said as we see it, and frankly as well, if you take a look at Ralph, you'll find out why he's a nut. You know, he goes to Sullivan's. Take a look Trick at this guy. Huh? Yeah. Trick or treat. Trick or treat. Yeah. Both of those phony answers. Either way, you glasses. come up short. <laughs> Folks, if you've uh, been disappointed because we haven't had the poll last week, and we won't have one this week, actually, it's because Dave Riley is enjoying his honeymoon. All right. And he does our polling for right. us, so we wish him a best. He'll, he'll be back next week, I believe. And David Riley, I've known for many years, is a very fine young man. Right. Yes, so, he is. But okay. he should have interrupted his honeymoon to ha have the poll. I mean, oh, oh, abs oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> but anyways, we wish uh, Dave the <laughs> best with his new bride, you know. Let's get right to it. Frankly, oh, wait a minute, excuse me, folks, the sages. Malcolm, <laughs> Ralph, Ralph, put on your glasses again, and... The Jewish kid. Uh, now you look And by the way, his new bride, Maxine. <laughs> does Maxine talk at all? She does only. Oh, Jewish? She speaks Yiddish. At the she same Yiddish? time, she has a foul mouth like you would not believe. And she didn't get it from me. Yeah, she learned it from you. <laughs> I don't think so. I think so. <laughs> Frankly, Joe, can Lynn afford more affordable housing? Every city council candidate at a forum hosted by the New Lynn Coalition was in favor of more affordable housing and against tax breaks for developers. The host, but being the new Lynn Coalition, argued that folks were being pushed out of Lynn because of rising rents. Furthermore, they argued, or it argued, uh, that there's a good development and bad development. Now here's an example of what they consider a bad development. The $90 million Monroe Street project was bad. Why? because they had no affordable units, and they received the $2.5 million tax break. Now, what was good, however, according to the folks at uh, the New Lynn Coalition, is the Gateway North Project down on Washington Street, the old, what was that, the Blue Note site uh, on Washington yeah, and Sagamore. So. That was a good one. Why? Because it had 71 mixed income units, whatever that means. It was all union. And it was 100% financed and built by unions, which tells you that the new coalition is probably a little Pro left union. of center. All attendant candidates who have about the courage of nobody favored an exclusionary or an inclusionary zoning ordinance requiring 20% of all development in the city of Lynn above eight units would have to have affordable housing. Did you believe that one? And they were all opposed to tax breaks for developers. So I ask you folks, what are your thoughts? 781-780-9460. If they didn't have tax breaks, there wouldn't, wouldn't be any development. Let's face Very it. Very good, that, Ralph. That's, it, that's a genius. Yeah, but there, Ralph, I must agree with Joe. You're that, that's, that's ingenious. Yeah. Know, but you know the Chevy site, that, didn't that get a 10-year riff, a 10-year tax break, didn't it? Who? The, 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 the Beacon she, Chevrolet. The Beacon Chevrolet site. That got a 10-year tax break. Yes. Yeah, but what happens in the out years? What happens to the folks that come there and spend money in the city of Lynn? Casual question. Yes. Would you be pleased paying $4,000 a month for an apartment knowing the guy down below is paying about $800? That's exactly yeah. the point. Very good. It, of course it, not. It, so it, mixed housing can't work. It's impossible. It's, it's impossible. And the for last it to thing work. this city of Lynn needs is affordable housing. It needs. What they need is inaffordable housing. They need, they market, need market value rates. It, it, basically, if you want to grow your city, you're not going to grow it on Section 8 or welfare housing. You're so, going to have to go with the open, free open market rates and bring in p people that are in business. And when they come into these apartments or to the homes, they bring their money with them and they start, you're going to start building uh, various stores in the city and they're going to be keeping what do you money call in. that? What do you call that market force that you're talking about? What is that known as, that economic system? Capitalism, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> now, capitalism has delivered more goods to more people at the vo affordable right. prices than right. any system ever conceived right. of by man. Right. Is that correct? Right. The, only, okay. the, problem, the problem is there's not enough housing. That's the problem. So, so the, the market, th there's not enough units. When, pe when people today try to look for rental units and lend, they can't find them. They don't exist. So therefore, what happens? So the, the price goes way, Remember way up. Remember Adam Smith, a friend of yours? That's right. He wore golf glasses like you. Yeah, I think so. What was Adam Smith's great dictum? That was the invisible hand theory. That's right. And what did he talk about? He talked about the relationship between supply and demand, correct? Right. right. 
So if your supply, supply exceeds the demand, demand it, the price goes up. No, it doesn't. No, it goes down. It goes down. Oh, it's the, if the supply exceeds the demand, if you have too much the, of the a price supply. goes down. The price right. goes down. Right. So you said that there's not enough housing. There's not enough housing. If there's not enough housing, therefore the price goes, the price up. goes up. The price goes up. Yeah. Right. Okay. Right. Does anybody believe that there's not enough housing stock in the city of Lynn? There isn't enough. There isn't, there isn't enough. enough. No, absolutely is not. Absolutely not. So therefore, the price being up is a good thing. Well, it is. The problem is, I, I, I the, the working poor, the people only making thirty-five, forty thousand uh dollars, -huh. and they want to live in their own unit. It's very, very difficult. A huge percentage of their income goes in, goes to rent. Yeah. So yeah. Well, if but we also we also no, we also no. have that arrangement worked out in the city pretty well. We do take care of, you know. I have uh, on this panel, folks. In case you know, even though we all die our hair to look a little older, so we not think, not me. You don't die. I don't die my hair. <laughs> uh, we're seniors. Really. None of us live in senior housing. Well, you actually you do. No, I do. I live yeah. in senior housing. You live Three in senior us, housing. Yeah, right. Okay. So. Senior housing that they keep talking about building, right. I often ask why. I mean, who would want to go to live in senior housing? Most people, when they become seniors, their houses are paid for, or they've been renting at a place for many, many years, right? So why would they want to go into senior housing? Oh, the housing? thing is, you, you've got a place basically like Brooksby Village. Yeah. That is, uh, it, it's senior housing. But they take care of you. It takes care right. of right. their medical right. and takes care of their right. food. And that's a different it's issue. Uh, right. It's about $8,000 a month, too. And Brookline, and Brookline, which has been very profitable for developers, is to build senior housing where they take care of you. That's it's a called good assisted thing. living. That, that's a good thing. Right. Well, it's not really assisted living no. in the sense that you really have your own place. Yeah. And if you, that's if right, but that's and, called and you also have a have, doctor in they the They have medical absolutely, services absolutely, there and everything else. And all kind of yeah. activities and right. whatnot. They make a fortune building that. You could not sustain that in the city of Lynn. But that's what we need. Yeah. What is needed, that type of senior housing makes eminent sense. Yep. I have no problem with that whatsoever. That, that, that's why Brooksby Village is thriving. That's right. Well, but the 781 780 9460. But people with a lot of money live in Brooksby Village. It's, it's thousands of people. Why do you keep talking about things in terms of a lot of money? In a capitalist system, money is fluid. Right. You're not locked into I poverty, I Ralph. My, you my, can get out of poverty, and by the way, you can also lose a fortune. My ex mother in law lives in Brooksby Village, $8,000 a month. Could she afford it? Yes, she could. Well, then it's no big deal. What size apartment did she have? All right. The I reason why she lived there, Ralph, <laughs> is because she could afford it. That's the reason true. why you That's can't true. live there, because yeah. you can't afford no, it. No. Not for that matter, can I? That's very, very good economic sense. Solid. Yeah. You so. know, the thing I keep thinking is, you walk into a very fancy men's shop, and the suit is $1,200, mm -hmm. and you say to the man, well, you know, I really can't afford that suit. Can't you make the price come down? Is he going to make the price come down? If he wants the money, he will. I don't think he's going to. He's no. going to, he's going to say to you, thank you very much. Maybe you should shop someplace else. Mm -hmm. That's the story of life. Yeah. Let me ask this other question. Folks, please uh, give us your, your thoughts about is Lynn or does Lynn have or does Lynn need more affordable housing or can Lynn afford to have more affordable housing? That's, that's the question. Can Lynn afford to have more? No, no, that's they, right. no they cannot. You have more affordable and why? housing. And why? You're not going to move forward. But why? Why can't Lynn afford to have more affordable because housing? Because these people have no money. These right. You need to bring people into the city that have some money. That's, yeah. why, that's why a lot of the retail... And money usually follows money, and when it's following money, it's usually following more money. We have less and less money in 01902. We have less and less money there. And as I said last week, there were 10,000 people eligible for, for a, uh, uh, medical subs uh, subsidies in, in 01902 alone. That's a lot. 10,000 people okay, but qualify. Let me, for, that's a, that's a but, lot of but poor now, people. Let's, let's accept that. Okay. So why do we have folks who are running for the city council in the city of Lynn, every single one of them that attended? Mm -hmm. I don't want to talk about folks that didn't attend. Who right. knows where they stood? Mm -hmm. But everyone who attended that particular forum mm -hmm. was in favor of more affordable housing. Is that a good way to think when you're going to go on the city council and make also decisions? That's pandering. But because they think these are the people that are going to put them in office. Yeah. That's why they want So it. they're catering to... Right. The New Lynn Coalition is a left-wing organization. Tell me about it. I mean, it's, it's, I, I spoke there one time, and I try to volunteer my time 
to, to help the, the, uh, the Spanish learn English um, uh, and their math, and they didn't want anything to do with me. I did. At, at the Lynn Museum, I spoke a Why didn't they ago. want anything to do with you? Because they, they, they want to have a government program where people get paid and they can control them. They I want see. control. They want more money. They want more, more government money to, so they can control people. That's why. That's, okay. that's an honest to God truth. All right. So, Lynn, affordable. Can Lynn afford affordable housing? More affordable no. housing? No. No. 781 780 9460. Let me go back to this other issue also on development, good of development, bad development. I don't really believe that development can be categorized as good or bad. I think, you know, it's on the margins. Development that brings in revenue for the city and helps the city out so that we can pay for our services like the 26 cops that we're about to hire. Yeah, right. yeah. is a good thing. Yeah, you know. that's good development. Right. So if someone decides to go for $90 million and take a flyer on Monroe Street and Lynn, mm -hmm. Isn't if, if, if to entice them to do that, you give them certain breaks, why is that all of a sudden anathema? It would be, I, I would much rather see the development going in than to see a vacant lot. A vacant lot is not going to bring in that much tax revenue. It's going to take, bring in land tax. Mm -hmm. You have a developer come in that's going to build apartments, whether, whether they're low income or their market value. You're going to increase the amount of money going into the city treasury. But the see, here's, why, here's, here's where I depart company with you. You did the same thing. You made a caveat there. You said whether they're low income or market. I'm saying that the city of Lynn better stop thinking about you know, low income and start thinking about market value. When you go to Revere, when you go to Chelsea, also, by the way, Ralph, right. poor communities, not economically right. advantaged, right. Those high rises going up are market rate. Every yeah. one of yeah. them. Fifteen right. years ago in Chelsea, the police were afraid to patrol the streets themselves. Okay, they were saying, "Well, there's a call. Don't send me. Send yeah. the other guy." Okay. Now they're building condominiums in Chelsea that start at five hundred thousand dollars, and the best view of the city of Boston is from the Chelsea Harbor side. Okay, mm -hmm. Chelsea has come back. It was right. in the it was in the pits. Right. It went bankrupt. Mm -hmm. It went absolutely bankrupt. BU, Boston University, Came had, into a, the education had to system. take over right. the whole school system right. and revamp it. Mm -hmm. Okay? They, by accident, pulled it off. You think it was an accident, or do you think it was just... It was by accident, because they, okay. they didn't really plan. Let's go bankrupt, because we're going to do very well. So the point being is that Chelsea, Revere, Somerville can be thrown into that mix also. Yes, Somerville right. is, is light years ahead of both of them. Right. Somerville got condominiums now for $2 million. And yet, right. 20 years ago, right. you wouldn't go into Somerville on no. a bad Hell no. Bed, no. Right? Chow, no. Well, look at but, Charlestown. Charlestown, your life wasn't worth 10 cents 15 years ago. Davis Square in Somerville, that's the, that, that, that's the keystone of, of everything, right? And they have... They have uh, they have two, they have something that we have the MBTA right there, mm -hmm. and they also have Tufts University right up the street. Tufts has nothing to do with yeah, it. Absolutely, has everything to do with yeah, it. Why, why do you say that? Why, why do you say that? Because because when my daughter was was going to go there for graduate school, yeah. she could not find an apartment years and years ago. Okay? But what does that have to do with us being? Uh... Because it, big upgrade. Because people have full. See, what we have in London, we, we have a junior college. Where? They're not where? 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 Not sure. Not sure. Community, community, community college, right yeah. down the street. I'll oh, show okay. you. You, if if but, if you drive by there and you blink, you right. passed it. But what's the difference between that and, and, and a full time college? A full time college, the students live there. Their, their professors will live there. There'll be full time professors there all the time. It'll be a, t a totally different situation, and that builds up okay. Davis Square area. But all hear me up out. To, up until the midnight. bottom line of Somerville is you can have an apartment there and get on the train and be in your job in downtown mm -hmm. Boston in ten minutes. Right. You can in Lynn too. No, you can't. can't. No, no, you can't. How could you Not get from here? Minutes. In 25 minutes, you can. Maybe an hour, mm -hmm. at, at, at the most. Okay, put, look, forget about the time flap. The point is, is the Somerville, disadvantaged community, right. Chelsea, disadvantaged right. community, Everett, disadvantaged right. community, uh, right. Revere, every single one of those communities are booming now, right. and they're building right. market rate right. condos. They are, they're right. All over the place. And, and guess what? They're not having a problem filling right. them either. And also, all of them are very heavily Spanish 
too, just like Lynn. Heavily what? Heavily sp Spanish orientated, uh, populated. But I don't think that's relevant. What's relevant well, is is market forces. I don't think it's an issue of ethnicity. I think it's an issue of market. Right. You want to bring you know, in the people, I, the money. people? Green doesn't care what color you are. But who's moving into these places in Chelsea and Somerville? And yuppies. 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 My yuppies. daughter, yuppies. 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 my daughter, my daughter, yuppies and, and, right. and, and, right. and young married people. That's right. what makes right. a city right. grow. Right. My old people don't make a city grow. Right. Just my granddaughter just moved in mm -hmm. to where yeah. her apartment in Child, not apartment, her she bought a house in Charlestown. In Charlestown. In Charlestown. But must be must be very nice and expensive as hell. It cost her eight hundred grand. Her and her husband. Her and her husband are, you know, doing quite well. Okay. Right? She's ready to have a child shortly, so they finally mm -hmm. get, they spent some money to renovate it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they're happy as can be. You know what they do? They don't have an automobile. They don't need one. Because when you're making, yeah. they work in Boston. Everything happens mm -hmm. there. They need to go somewhere. They call Uber. Is that what they do nowadays? Yeah. Yeah. Uber yeah. or right. Lyft. Uber. So that's a huge expense. Right. People don't realize it's an offset. Right. Yep. Charlestown was an eyesore. Exactly, but not anymore. Hell no. And I'm supposed to go there, you know, to... So what, to why isn't me. that happening in Lynn? What's the, what's the answer? Because you have people who go to a forum in which they talk about not giving tax breaks to developers why do you, and let's have more affordable and that's housing. Gonna that's prevent, why. That's going to prevent people from coming in. You, you have, have, you have yeah. a city council that really, I, I don't know how these people stay in office. They're because they... You, you said it earlier. They're, pre they're preaching to the choir. You know, they're, they they're think that these were the most out. If the folks out there, the ones, look, today, I had to cut a check for 1500 bucks <laughs> to the city of Lynn for, for my quarterly yes. real estate tax, correct? Yep. So the folks out there were getting whacked. And not only that, I got to pay a water bill. Mm hmm Oh, this month for about a hundred and some odd dollars. Yeah. How about so, your trash fee? Did you pay that yet? I hope that. Yeah, I already paid that. <laughs> so they have fees all over the place. So how can we, and we're going to add 26 new cops. Right. That yeah. right? That's oh. right. And the pot shop that was supposed to bang up business <laughs> three is not bringing in, in two nickels. Right. So you got to wake up to this. You know, the folks who are paying the freight should ex at least say, do you mind giving me a kiss before? You know? uh, yeah. yeah. And these people are the highest paid representatives of, of any town around. They're getting $25,000 a year. That's so, just, the, the. that's not counting the extra. The guys in Malden are getting 6500 The guys at the... Peabody and Denver, they have four, four or five grand The Lynn City Council, I believe, makes 35000 a year, don't they? I, Where? I, I, I think they... Lynn, Lynn. 25. 20, 20, but, then they have an expense account on top of that. Yeah. It's... Yeah. But, Obviously, obviously, they get away with it because look, if the people here had any intelligence who live here, they wouldn't let this happen. Well, let's see what's going to happen next Tuesday when there's an election, okay? What's going to That's happen? Nothing's point. going to happen. I bet only 15 to 20 percent of the people will show up. You even know why? It's a tax burden. Because they realize this, nothing's going to change. It's and a true. lot of it's their own fault. That's true. Okay? But you also have powers to be. I mean, where is the paper of record? Talking about and writing right, about right. the problems that the city has, instead of going right. along, right. you know, it's like anything else. Right. And we only one get, person we, running has, has talked about cutting taxes. One person. Who? The Greek guy. What's his name? Meniatus. Mateus. What's his name? Who? Wad Three Council. Wad Three Council. He's the only one talking about cutting taxes. The only one. Because he's a, he's an entrepreneur. He's in the real estate business. He yeah. understands business. When you when you have folks running that have a hard time being able to break a dollar and break it down into nickels and dimes, right. and they're on the city council. What do you expect? Yep. It's, 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 you know? But how do they get there in the first place? Money. That's they what it was. the position. No, I don't I, believe that. No. I believe, no, I, no, I believe we'll, it. We'll get into it. Up in smoke, folks. Let's get up there. Uh, Pedro, do we have a little video to show uh, before we do up? Well, put up and smoke the graphic first. The story tonight there from Lynn. The owners here at Apothka expect as many as a thousand people to walk through these doors when this becomes the first store in Lynn to offer recreational pot to its customers and to avoid a mess on the Linway. They've got a message for those who plan to spend their money here. Adults 21 and up will have more options when buying recreational marijuana. Apothka will begin sales Saturday morning after their Lynn store got the green light from the state. We are going to be the first one in Lynn on the Linway 
um, and the second closest to Boston. To avoid a traffic jam on the Linway, they're asking drivers to park down the street. And we're encouraging everybody to go park at 98, the Linway. It's the former Porthole restaurant where there'll be a complimentary shuttle service. Inside, they'll have a variety of recreational marijuana flowers. And so this is a Tropicana cookies. It's a sativa. Pot lace chocolates and gummies, along with existing medical marijuana products. Alex Evans says he was pleasantly surprised visiting a pot shop for the very first time. It was medicinal before, and I definitely think there's a lot of benefits, even on recreational use. It's been nearly three years since Massachusetts voters legalized pot for adults. Apothka's CEO says he's surprised it's taken the state this long to give them a recreational license, but added it was well worth the wait. It's been a long road for us, but at the end of the day, we're here. Well, up in smoke. Let's get that graphic up there. There was a projection that the city was going to pick up, what, 600 grand? 600,000 dollars. Right? They're going to get 3%. Meanwhile, take a look. No lines, no, no waiting. Right. Tom Grillo said that. 781-780-9406. I think there were 20 show. people in line right. before it opened that up. That one shop, that one shop that they're talking about, Apothrica, said that they would do $10 million a year in business. Right. $10 million. How is that possible? <laughs> I, don't think, I don't even think they're there. <laughs> what do you mean? They're, they're there. <laughs> they're, they're there. The three people. <laughs> I, so, I, you all agreed that the tax revenue was overstated? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Cannabis. Supposed to be a windfall, if we can put that little graphic up there, because we're going to let people know what the projected what actually happened in Massachusetts. You see my little friend there with all the money? <laughs> Massachusetts projected $63 million in its first year of recreational marijuana, which ended in June. And here's the kicker. They didn't even get half of that. Well, okay? They projected $63 million, and they got less than half. Three gentlemen. Two were executives at Apple, and one was an executive at uh, Google. I mean, I'm not talking like yeah, good jobs. Apple I mean, they, they were in the, uh, in the high tier e echelon of the company. Yep. And they quit their jobs. The three of them started a company, and they didn't borrow. They raised $175 million to go into the marijuana business. Mm -hmm. And they convinced the people who invested that they would be doing more business than Apple and Google combined. They're now bankrupt. They're broke. As we speak right now, these facts I can back up. There's 11 million pounds. Did you hear what I just said? 11 million alone. pounds of marijuana sitting in warehouses that's going to go nowhere. Right. So right. The, first of all, first that means of, that the price is going to come uh, down because right. if you over yeah. well, on, on 60 minutes, they they said that the revenue was nowhere near what it was supposed they to be. They thought they were going to kill the black market. Right. The black market now is making more money than right. they ever thought. Why? Because there are 39 states that have not legalized marijuana, and I've been practicing on my math, Ralph. Good. That means <laughs> there are 11 states that passed it. So the 39 that didn't pass it, they're selling it in leaps and bounds. That's number one. Number yeah. two. There was a guy on TV on 60 Minutes, 60 Minutes who said he grows marijuana. He's now in the whole 50000 bucks because the taxes, he was borrowing water from an untapped source right. to water his plants, right. and they found out about it, and they, and, they, and they came after him in leaps and bounds. The fact of the matter, we're, ta we're talking about basic economics again. The price is much too high at these places. Not only yeah. that, it's there was a poor slob who's a school teacher, a nice guy who was in line when, this, when one shop opens up, and the principal of the school saw Sarah. him st standing in line, the next morning, they called him into his office and they fired him. Yes, now, yes. He, he took it. the case to court, and I'll tell you what, he's going to win. Sure. And not, right. only is he, not only is he going to win, he's going to get some money. Is there yeah. still a stigma if one is considered a pot smoker? I is, don't think it looks good on your resume. That's what I'm trying to say. Okay. Yeah. okay. Yeah. So it, that, that, that's a good yeah. point. So what happens if a public servant is seen uh, to uh, be a steady but, customer? But, but going back yeah. to it, these are three executives who work for Fortune 500 yeah. billion right. companies that they had in their head. They're going to make millions upon zillions and talked about maybe 40 or 50 people to put in 175 million, mm. and they've gone bust. All right. 
That's a that's a that's good good Joe. Uh, that's a warning for all the people that uh, eleven million pounds of marijuana yeah. is sitting in California in warehouses yeah. that's going nowhere. Ralph, go the, on the, 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 the people are there. The, the people are applying for jobs. You know, they go on uh, social media now on your Facebook, and they'll see if you, you're a, a pot smoker or not. And and I have these debates all the time on Facebook with people about marijuana. And these people that are debating me, they're going to be looking for jobs someday, and they're going to be calling up their Facebook, and they're going to be in trouble. Oh yeah, you don't yeah, want yeah. to do that. It, you know, it, 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 it just doesn't do it. look good. You know what no, I'm there's saying? Still, there's still a stigma. Oh, of course. Seven eight one seven eight zero nine four six. So apparently. It's been a big bust. You know, one of the biggest smoke. problems they have with the, the city of Lynn with all Hemp, not marijuana. What's, what's that mean? See, hemp. Hemp. Uh, my uh, uh, producer just sent something to me. Tell me about hemp. Uh, that, t I think they're talking about CBT. CBD. 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 Oh, that's, uh, that's right. going big. Guns everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Everywhere yeah. I go. That's not marijuana. That's, that's it, from it, a it, marijuana it, plant, but it's, but, it, but it's not. It's not what. It's not. Uh, it doesn't have any THC in it. No, it's too, no THC in it. So, but it's grown from a cannabinoid. Can cannabis. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, so, from, it's from the same plant. But what's the a difference? Cannabinoid something. It, it doesn't have THC in it, as Malcolm has said. So it has a chemical. It's a, a different, different, chemical different situation. Right. It's supposed to help anxiety and, and uh, arthritis. Arthritis. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of people yes. have swear by it. They rub it on I, their. I, I use it. And. Yeah. and Yes. And it works. Does it, it really it work? It does work. Yeah. Give I mean, up to Ralph. I've, yeah. used, I've used lidocaine spray for my leg. It will last for a short period of time. What I tried, I figured, ah, the heck with it. I'll give it a shot. I got it through Where Amazon. Where did you buy it? You, you, you buy Amazon it the, com, Amazon.com. Yeah. And it's, mm -hmm. it's basically like a hemp cream. Mm -hmm. It's produced in Hawaii. Right. In Hawaii. And right. what you do is you just put it on. Rub it into the area right. where you have right. the pain right. for about 30 seconds. And so it dissolves into the skin. And it alleviates the and pain. It's Does it really work that yes. good? It's absolutely it legal, I, too, okay. you know, by I the way. I can't say for what, what? It's absolutely legal. The federal yeah, government yeah. legalized but it a not, while but, ago. But they haven't regulated it They haven't yet. regulated it, but they've legalized it. I, I want to get to something that I want to give Dave, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, Pedro Diaz a great deal of credit. He's our producer, folks, and right. uh, one of the best, and director. Uh, he, on his own accord, researched marijuana's legalization in Massachusetts for adults 21 years and older. And interestingly, there's a lot of restrictions. So here's a listing of them. Marijuana in any form is prohibited in public. I never knew that. Right. Yeah. You can't smoke yeah. marijuana in public, no. State law allows up to one ounce on you, on me. Mm -hmm. and you can only have 10 ounces in your house. Mm -hmm. So you can't walk around with that 11 million yeah. pounds. Yeah. I mean, you just can't do it. You can only yeah. allow. Like, can you imagine having 11 million pounds sitting doing nothing? We're going to take a plane shot and go out to California and grab some whoa, of them to make a whoa. score. Uh, growing up to six plants is a lot. I didn't know you can grow your own plants. Grow yeah. your own. Yeah. You grow six plants. I think I'll mm -hmm. get some. Uh, more than one ounce of marijuana in your home must be locked. It's best to keep any amount locked away to keep children and pets safe. Pets eat it and they get high themselves. Yeah, I've never seen Max my dog do smoke a joint yet. You're kidding. God forbid. <laughs> I wouldn't even, you know. Oh, my God. Like alcohol, an open container of any form of marijuana in your car is illegal. It must be stored in a closed container in your trunk and locked in the glove compartment. It's illegal to drive under the influence of marijuana. Try, try enforcing yeah. that one. If you use, don't get behind the wheel. Take public transportation, ride, share it, et cetera, et cetera. That's, that's similar to alcohol. Yeah. Same Employers, landlords, cities and towns may have their own policies right. about the use of marijuana. That's the important right. thing, In right? In most places, yeah. you can't smoke at all anymore. Well, I mean, you, yeah. you know what the, the thing is? When they first came out with the a lottery in many different shapes and forms with the numbers and this and that, did it hurt organized crime? It certainly did. I mean, it, 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 it destroyed. Orga organized crime made millions yeah. from people playing the numbers and this and that. Yes. Yeah. Okay, but the lottery mm -hmm. killed it. Right. What, but marijuana isn't the same thing. Well, the, marijuana, the, the, they tax the hell out of right. it. And, and the price and the people, is too high. It's you just can, too you high. can get a better deal on the black market than you can right. through a legal uh, pot shop. Even prohibition. Did prohibition accomplish anything? Not really, no. It just made a handful of people multi zillionaires. Mm -hmm. Got a few people made the killed. Kennedys too. A well, lot of got quite a few people killed. Yeah, and the Kennedys made a fortune. Yeah. The Kennedys and the Brofman family, too. 
Oh, that's Seagram Center. They're Canadians. That's legit. And, uh, yeah, but <laughs> they were bringing it in here. Oh, oh, okay. sure, of course they were bringing it in because, because Canada was a Commonwealth nation well, at the but time. Well, they made more money legal. doing yeah. it that way than they did it doing it legally. But that's neither here nor there. Marijuana is a different animal. How so? Because, number one, no matter what you say or who you say, if six people show up for a job with you and, and five of them are stoned, you're going to hire one of those guys? Not to run machinery, that's okay, for sure. Okay, thank you. Oh, yeah. that's, that's, that's the mindset. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, I would hire the, a person that was drunk. Well, sure, well okay, right. sure, of course. And I told, I told you that story again, again when, when I was working for, for a company in Pennsylvania. and I, I was in New Hampshire, and we called some, some important technical information about an account. And all, all the people, that, all my reps were high. All the technical <laughs> reps were high because they used to go out at noontime and smoke marijuana. I called around 1, 1 1.30, and they were all high. And you allowed, and I them, lost to the account. And, and you allowed them to work I wasn't the their boss. I wasn't their boss. You, told, you, said, you just I said a, they worked for you? I was a sales you. rep. Sales rep. Okay. Okay. So, but I, you didn't but I, turn them in? You didn't snitch on them? Well, 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 you know, you could have been a whistleblower. I could have been a whistleblower like your yeah. Italian friend there. Yeah. Uh, you know, that, uh, yeah. <laughs> Who's, who's his Italian friend? Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. My Sicilian, you know, mafioso. Sarah Mella, yeah. Sarah Mella, the, uh, the whistleblower. We now know who it is, the whistleblower. Is it Italian, of course? Yeah. So, let me see where we're at. 781-780-9460. Oh, marijuana, windfall, not so. Hold your breath, nope. folks. That place that, I, I know that place now that's on the Linway. I have never seen that open or anybody there. You mean the one on the way? Yeah. Well, apparently, they were supposed to have a big cost the city of Lynn a lot of money to put the details, right. extra details. Yeah, well, the state you know, police. And the, and the state police, and exactly three people showed up. Also, who's, who's going who's to go down and buy marijuana at a pot shop yeah. that's being monitored by the state police? <laughs> yeah, that, does, that, that doesn't, yeah, that's. I mean, I, yeah. I wouldn't go down there. I mean, for, the, they have body cams. And it's They're going to have you on camera. And, and, it's, and it's very expensive. Yeah. It's very expensive. You're, yes. you're better off going through the black market. <coughs> right. You get a better deal and a better quality. We, 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 I didn't know you had investments with... there. Yeah. <laughs> we uh, have a video to show, and we're going to put it up there as we speak. It's ready to go. Let's have it. Recreational marijuana won't legally be sold in Massachusetts until July 2018. By 2020, the state could collect as much as $172 million every year just from sales taxes. The Department of Revenue calculated this number, assuming marijuana is taxed a total of 12 percent, according to the ballot law that voters approved back in November. It adds a 3.75 excise tax to the state's 6.25 percent sales tax, and another 2 percent that cities and towns can add if if they want to host a pot shop. Those who support the ballot law caution lawmakers not to set the tax standard too high or else it could drive some buyers to actually go to the black market. If the excise tax bumps up to 5%, the state could collect $11 million more. Lawmakers still haven't finalized how much pot will be taxed in the state. I think that it's a little high, I, you know, comparing that to alcohol. It's the same kind of deal. Which is 6.25 percent. Alexander suggests that the tax money collected should go towards the state's education system and local food banks, while others suggest... Health care, um, and um, particularly with um, drug rehabilitation services and, and the like. If lawmakers stick with a total 12 percent, Massachusetts would have the lowest marijuana rate out of any state that has legalized recreational marijuana, except for Maine, which the tax rate has at 10 percent. Washington has the highest tax at 37 <laughs> percent. Is that something, huh? 37 percent is unbelievable. I, I, I guess. I didn't know that. <laughs> you know, well, we really have to get, more, seriously, I want to, I'm going to go back. I, I realize Dave's on vacation, not mm -hmm. vacation, he's on his honeymoon. That's a vacation. Yeah. Depends upon what you do. An enjoyable <laughs> vacation. That's a lovely vacation. <laughs> oh, okay. And, Can be. And Pedro, you know, Diaz, they really put together yeah. a great yeah. show for yeah, us. And I want to thank Pedro, yep. particularly yeah. because those were terrific yeah, clips Pedro, you put up there. God bless you, my dear. It's, right. right. it's, like, right it. it's just like a professional uh, ABC, uh, CB, uh, Fox News, or whatever. We do it for pretty professional. As long as you didn't say CNN and MSNBC. Okay. Well, the Clinton that, News no. Network? <laughs> 26 new cops, 26 new police officers. Now, try to follow this because I'm having difficulty with 10. Mm -hmm were paid for by the seven hundred fifty mm -hmm. seven hundred and twenty thousand right, dollars right. that allegedly came from healthcare savings, yeah, right? right. Three point right. nine. And then 16, sixteen 
supposedly were to replace retiring Retire, police officers right. and thereby right. claiming yeah. that it didn't right. affect the budget. Well, but it's but a here, Well, let me finish, Rob. But here is what I don't understand, and that's why I'm asking the right. sages, because right. you're okay. supposed to be... We are, we are smart. Sages, that's right. Nice. If a cop is working and right. he's at 80 grand right. and he retires, right. it isn't as if you save money because he retired because that is funded, you're going to... He's going to be picking up eighty percent of his income over yeah, right. on the other side, which yeah, is right. which is going to. So right. there yeah. is no savings to the city. It's actually an increase, isn't it? That's true. That's true. Because there, they there, get, was, they get, there was supposed to be a funding into the retirement that was totally separate from the city. Mm. That but that's not the case. It's it? never been the case. Mm. Right. So the people, point, people have been lied right. to. The city, the city funds all of the retirement, I believe. Yeah. I believe. Well, we'll the, check on that. But, uh, I, I know I we have an unfunded know. pension liability, and right. we have a kid that's working very diligently. Uh, you know, a guy like you came from a background like yours, you know, what? accounting, uh, Yiddish, so and very good with a pencil, and he's doing a terrific job. In fact, his father, mm -hmm. Herbie Brenner, was one of the great basketball coaches mm -hmm. in the city. We had the kid on a mm -hmm. few years ago, I'm, I'm frankly speaking, mm -hmm. doing a marvelous job he's just of getting the ratio under right. control. Right. Right. You know, because we were way on, underfunded. I think yeah. by now yeah. it was probably 50, 60 percent funded, which is, That's you know, Roman work. Yeah. So congratulations to that. But the point I'm simply trying to make is, folks, is that, you know, you've got to think about these things. You've got to look well, at the fine print. Another so thing, they say that they budgeted the money for the police. That's all right, good and well. Right. But once a person retires, it isn't as if the cost is gone. Right. The thing is, if you have a police officer that at the time of retirement, his yearly income was $80,000, that does not mean that his replacement is going to be paid $80,000 a year. That's true. And it should be far less if they're just That's starting true, but out, nevertheless, so there will be a it, savings. But, but whoever takes right. his place is an add-on right. expense but, to the overall budget of the city but Joseph, because right. the retiree right. is still going right. to receive money. Right. Right. The He's thing is, the retiree is not working, supposed to be coming out I. of a totally different fund. Right. I, I, yeah, fund, but still it has to, co come, it has to come from the well, total that, budget. That's a, that's the Whether it's a different the fund, it comes from the same universe. Right. So the 26 are in addition to the 19th authorized last year. I couldn't make sense of that. So 10 are the replacement, mm -hmm. uh, are the 10 were the what? The insurance ones, right? And there were nine. It's, it's, I remember right. this, because we talked about it. The, the, ten, the, ten, the 10 that just are coming in, they're, they're coming in under, under that 3.94 savings. That's 10. But right. the nine no, came no. from COPS, a grant from the federal government. Right, right. And that's temporary. Yeah. It's only three uh, years. Yeah, three, three years. Then you pick up the tab. Then the city has to pick up the tab. Yeah, I don't understand wh wh where the, the, th the money from that savings from, from the uh, health insurance comes in, where that comes in. If that's being picked up by the COPS, yeah. so there should be... 720000 but that's only one year. One year. Right. One year. So, yeah. currently... There's supposed to be 170, uh, currently there's 173 cops, allegedly, okay? Mm -hmm. I, I, this is the, the math's got me all filed up, but I'm putting up there. And then they're going to add 26 more, where you end up with a total of 199. 199. And the optimal staffing, according to McGarry, Chief McGarry, should be 195, which is a good thing. Yep. Listen, I'm in favor of more cops. Uh, I just want to understand it a little better. And then they're trying to say that that 199 number is fluid, because who knows? I don't know. I, so I'm confused. 781 780 9460. Well, one, one thing about the pensions that I want to bring up, you should know this being a former full time school teacher. Right. Out of your paycheck every week, you paid an exorbitant amount of money into your pension. No, I didn't pay yes. an exorbitant amount. I paid 5%. That's more than most places. It's up to 11 now. I mean, I work for GE. The highest we ever paid was 3%. Mm -hmm. Okay. And that was after mm -hmm. you got to a break right. point where you started paying in. The company paid but in Ma up to Malcolm, that point. Malcolm, I believe teachers get a lot more money in their retirement. They go than by a percentage. Gets. They get they 80%. Get 90, they get 90% teachers. But also teachers no, do not get, get Social Security. It's effectively 90% because you don't have to pay state well, may, may, tax. Well, well, my ex-wife gets 90%, she told me, so... She, she, also, she also, gets ninety percent. She's a, she was a teacher. She gets ninety percent. She's still well, me. She, normally it's eighty percent. Is it? Okay. It's maxed also, out at eighty. You don't get it's effectively ninety percent because you don't have to pay mm -hmm. a state mm -hmm. income tax. Right. They can't mm -hmm. tax your pension. Mm -hmm. But the federal government has a good good time taxing it. Oh yeah. Right. You know. Mm -hmm. So but the thing is, like I told you, the, the school teachers get a good pension, but they also don't get social security. 
Right. Well, they That's don't pay into it. either. They oh, don't well, pay yeah, into my it. My wife gets a whopping I, I $37 a month. I got Social Security. But they, Security? They, yeah. they slotted me. Mm -hmm. What I was supposed to get and what I got tax. are two different stories. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I got about about 20% uh, of what I should have normally got because I had worked and, pro and I owned my own business. I paid into FICA max mm -hmm. for years. And I was in it, what, I was caught in some type of 1985 windfall, whatever, whatever, tax. whatever it was. And so they, they cut back. Mm -hmm. I, I received nickels and dimes. Mm -hmm. You know. yeah. but, but they means test it that, because the teachers now are making so much money on their retirement. They means test it. So, like for, for my situation, I was married over ten years, and, and my, my ex wife you called me. That long? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and my ex wife called me and she asked me if, if she, she'd rather get on to Medicare r rather than than, than the, the state plan. It, it, I guess it's better. And we found out we can't because. She makes so much money, they means test her, and she can't go on my Medicare. Other, but otherwise, she would have been able to if she didn't make that much money. Do you have a problem with means testing? Does anybody have a problem well, with means I, testing? Well, we have to have means testing because we won't be able to pay our Social Security bills. We won't be able to do it. We have to so, means test. So an individual that pays effectively, in the old days, what, it was 17% goes to FICA? Uh, half, no, half, half, no, used to be no. six, six, It used to be 65 that's yeah. your share. Yeah, but but the total of 17. Your employer would pay another 6.5. Yeah, it was right. like 14% total. So, right. so, if you're paying in effectively 17% right. to FICA, yep. right? You're not, you don't mean to tell me that the person that's making a million bucks isn't chucking more money in right. there than the person that's making 10 bucks? Well, of course. Of, of course. course. Yeah, but there's, so, there's a I mean, ceiling, though. After, after 100 and something thousand, you don't pay any more. So, normally, so. the person that's... that's the person that's throwing in all yeah. that money at the FICA yeah. doesn't collect it anyhow right. because he doesn't right. need to, right? right? What, what Normally, right? What the hell so does I, a millionaire have to have to collect Social Security? For so, in other words, no. a person, no. a high-earning person, in effect, is not receiving benefits from Social Security, even though they contributed far more to it than anybody else. Well, of course, they, they collect. They collect. No, I understand that, but proportionally, Paul, they don't. No. Paul, how are you this evening? Help us out here. How you doing, guys? You need wisdom. I'm not doing too well because I don't have the wisdom that you have. <laughs> Abraham, Abraham, I, I love that dog on your lap. I I really want to come and see that dog, number one. Be here next that week. dog Paul. is great. Next week, and we'll have a few beers afterwards. <laughs> number two, number two, I just want to bring something up, guys. You're talking about the pot shop on the windway. Well, it turned out that they had 300 people total for the day. All right, 300, that's it, for the whole day. That's not good. Now, with, now Mayor McGee was there, and he's clipping the ribbon saying, oh, I hope they make tons of money. But number one, you got Pat McGrath, who owns the Port Hole Pub. Okay, wasn't that nice of him to let the shuttle buses go in there and bring the people to go down to there after being turned down to build his storage center on Blossom Street? which would have brought in 600000 to 800000 a year for the city of Lynn. Now, you tell me who's crazy here. <laughs> right. Well, right. he answered the question. That's a great, great, right. great, great, great right. comparison. Right, yeah. I wonder if he got any, uh, any, any rent for that, or, you know, any, any compensation. Well, he, I don't know. But look at the point he made. We had earlier he that 600000 went up in smoke because right. the projected revenue coming from the right. pot shop right. is yep. not about to happen. Meanwhile, they shot down a storage facility that there Pat was, McGrath was going to build. Was that a had yeah. There was a guarantee to get the money from yeah. that. The thing too. is, yeah. the storage facility wouldn't even look like a storage facility the way he had it constructed. Right. right. It yeah. would have... And they just said, no, we don't want that in this area. Now they make them look great. Anyway. Like really nice an, apartment an condos. Yeah. It's an industrial area anyway. And it's, it was not on the Linway. Right. On top no, of right. it, it was it a was side street. Obviously, what they're saying without saying is they don't like Pat McGrath. Apparently, I mean, you can make any conclusion you want, but six hundred thousand dollars was going to come in yearly, guaranteed without tax breaks. I didn't see any. And you don't even have to smoke it. I only saw a handful. And no kids going to school. Saturday morning, I only saw a handful of cars. I had to go back. I was going to. But hear me out. Well, okay, excuse me. You take three computer execs and talk. X amount of people to put in $175 million. That's the bottom line right there. If they couldn't do it, no one's going to do it. Well, yeah. Okay. So, but, but try telling that to folks running for office. They want to predicate revenue out of thin air so that they can fund programs that can't be funded otherwise. And only that, That's what happens. But and who gets caught 
with the differential. Well, After what they did fails, and they promise you, you know, it's, it's like Elizabeth Warren, I'm going to give you free education, I'm going to give you free this, I'm going to give you, you everything free free. that. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Really? Someone's going to end up paying for it. And what I'm saying, I just paid 1500 bucks to the city of Lynn on a check for my real estate. That's the second time yeah. you said that tonight, you know. That's the right right thing. Is that free yeah. thousand so you gave them? No, let's put so it this way. It, it, it is, is a pain in the pocketbook every quarter. Those oh, folks are yeah. the same boat as I am. And we would like a little, you know, thank you, maybe once in a while, a little, uh, you know, crumbs. And that's not happening. Right. And you, you have people wanting affordable housing. Who's paying for that, Ralph? You? Nope. No, of course not, because you're in subsidized housing. Yeah. You <laughs> paid fifteen hundred. I paid a thousand. What's that? Mean? So who's the dummy? You or me? Me. Why? You. Be because you have a house, and and I'm paying a thousand dollars a quarterly on a condo. Oh, well, that's know. for the amenities fee. That, that that's for that, that's for uh, just taxes. No. Yeah. No. Yeah. No. No. The condos. Yes. Condos yeah. are Four taxed. Four thousand dollars. Yeah. You live in a swamp, Scott. Wow. What do you think he lives? Oh. Hey. In case you didn't know, okay, we're going to a case you didn't know, boys and girls. In case you didn't know, Senator Joe Kennedy, I'm sorry, Representative Joe Kennedy wants a political system that works for everybody. In case you didn't know or you did know, Senator Markey is about providing opportunities for everybody. You notice the operative term here? Everybody. <laughs> everybody now, these folks yeah. were at the Franco-American Club this past Saturday wooing Sunday. the Democratic committees in the North Shore because they both are going to be running against each other, which you didn't think was going to happen. I'm telling you, at the, at, at, at the beginning, they talked to him not to do it. It doesn't You're look good. You're talking about Joe Kennedy. Yes. His, his, and then the word came, I said to him, I thought you told me, he said, his father said, I don't care what the hell they say. I want you to do it. The Kennedy family always marched to the different drama. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Joe Kennedy is officially yep. running against Markey. Meanwhile, the mayor of the city of Lynn and the entire Lynn delegation is backing Markey, right? That's All very right. interesting. Yeah, 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 you sure about that? I'm positive. I'm, I'm, I'm very pleased to hear that because I'll tell you the truth. I don't like either of them, but I think Markey should be, they should have said to him, this is your last term, then you're going to say goodnight. That's a low-class thing to do. He was 37 years a state. It, it doesn't uh, matter. And what, about right. six years, four or five right. or six years yeah. Yeah. senator. He, so he's been over 40 right. years. Yeah, he represented Malden, Revere, that area. Yeah. They both, now here's the part, they bo both agreed that there needs to be a substantial effort to combat the hatred and bigotry carried out by Trump. You know, I'm getting to be offended by that. I don't I, I, see. Do you? Do any of you? Is and, the Democrat. I, look, seven eight one seven eight zero nine four six zero. Any of you anti-Trumpers and any of you dedicated Democrats who think that Donald Trump is, you know, spewing out hatred and bigotry, call and tell me how and where. All I know is one thing: he's the guy that passed the reform. Prison Reform Act right. that helped out the black community. Right. He's the guy that drove unemployment among the black and minority communities way down. He has done more for, if anything, yep. right? And he, isn't he the guy that made Jerusalem the capital of uh, Israel? Yeah. That alone will get him as surely reelected. He may go for three turns because of that. A lot of folks turned around. <laughs> Seriously. Well, a lot of folks turned around and have been saying that, mouthing it, and never did it. So, Here's the part that gets me. I want someone not to use the word everybody anymore. Joe Kennedy wants a political system that works for everybody. Well, a political system can't work for everybody, can it? Can, it? can anything work for everybody? No, of course no. not. All right. So that's Somebody's foolishness. Somebody's going to be left out. How about this here? Senator Markey is about providing opportunities for everybody. Now, that I agree with. I think you should be able to try to provide opportunities. Right. Now, whether they not necessarily take, a, take advantage of it is a different right. issue, right? Opportunity is fine, providing opportunity, but giving opportunity or giving is right. not. Right, right. right. 781, right. 780-946. Like, uh, the school system, the superintendent of schools in Lynn want, wants to high, hire minorities now just, just because they're the minority. That, that's not right. You hire the best available. If they're all black, they're all Spanish, no matter what they are, it doesn't make any difference, but you hire the best. The one point that I do tend to agree with is this, and I'm only talking personally, anecdotally. When I was a young boy going to the school system, mm -hmm. I had 
as my seventh grade English teacher, a fellow named Walter Bolverini, mm -hmm. who became the majority leader, you know, politician Senate. of the city mm -hmm. of Lynn. Now, Walter Bolverini came in looking like he stepped out of Brooks Brothers. You get what I mean? He had beautiful right. mm -hmm. blue blazer, tie, the whole bit. Graduate of Boston College, football player. Right. And he happened to be, guess what, Italian-American. Mm -hmm. Oh, you get what I mean? <laughs> and then mm -hmm. I heard, I got a guy named Sal Gondolfo mm -hmm. and uh, Palumbo mm -hmm. and Benedetto. And all these fellows were in the Lynn school system, which for a young Italian boy was a good thing. Yeah. So I can understand what the superintendent is saying. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good thing to have folks from the minority mm -hmm. community have teachers mm -hmm. and specialists who are there that know them and understand them, that right. they can look up to. It's a good thing. So, but if it's done strictly for quota, right. it's no, a no. very bad but, well, thing. See, see, but Bolverini, if he, he, he was just coming in to be hired because of the sports background, that's a, that's a different, he has a special skill. He has a special skill. No, what, well, actually he was not a very good English teacher. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, he was, he was my boy. You know, he was, a, he was the football commissioner of the Northeast Conference. He was my well, boss, well, actually, well, one well, time. What I'm, what I'm well, saying Walter is, is that was a, a you know, gym teacher. some of the best teachers that I had as a student that I remember to this day happened to be from his tribe, Ragosa, an English teacher, and she was handicapped. There were some marvelous, marvelous teachers that did it there. Uh, Back in those days... From what I can remember, teaching was a major profession. It was. It's no it was longer a major profession yeah. anymore. It's passing time through yeah. the night. I mean, yeah. people who, I remember having teachers who had dedicated their whole entire life to, to yeah. education. Yes. It was almost yeah. like a religious calling. Yeah. yeah. Yes. 20, 30 years at the same yeah. school. But, but, but in those days, it was a guild. Right. Yeah. yeah. You also, in it those was days, not, got, you had parental involvement. Yeah. And in those you days. You don't have it today. Yeah. I could not imagine talking back to my teacher. Oh, you never I could did. not imagine having metal detectors in the hallways. But everything nope. is liberal today. Everything is pol I don't know if politically we call it, correct we call it liberal. Today. I, yeah. I think liberal. I think right. liberalism is a wonderful thing. But we we we've ruined the term. Liberal is to have is to be able to understand right, other right. people and be thoughtful, isn't that? But you don't think politically correct that the Lynn schools are politically correct? Do you know what happened to Connery School this week? Do you know what happened? No, no I have happened. no idea. Well, today the kids usually dress for years and years and years they dressed up in their Halloween costumes. But they didn't today. Do you know why? Why? Because two students complained about Halloween. So the kids at the Connery School, the elementary school, could not dress up in their Halloween they costumes. Why did they complain? What was the complaint? Was the complaint? Uh, they were, uh, as I understand it, I heard this from the street. All okay? right. so, so this is not first-hand knowledge I, as a whistleblower. I, I know. This is second no, or third no, no, I'm not an Italian whistleblower. Yeah, okay. the guy that blew on Trump. Yeah. Right? Connery but, School has not had a Halloween party in years. This is not something new. My wife was a teacher at Connery. They used to have a Halloween parade, and they used to have, like, Halloween parties. Oh. But because they, it was not politically correct anymore, they stopped it. What's, but what made what's, it unpolitically correct? Halloween is like Halloween. A, yeah, but okay. why is that? Because they were worshipping the devils, and All they right, were this and that. Who's worshipping devils? Well, Kids listen. dressing up like that. And then the thing is, is also having the food. That was not... Good nutritional food. I'd like to address something, excuse me, address yeah. something to you because you teach at Lynn English, is that right? I taught there, yeah. I'm sitting outside at Dunkin' Donuts because I have tables to sit down in with, my, with, with my pup. And this young man is dumping the garbage. He works at Dunkin', he's a young kid, and he's dumping the garbage out from the thing. And I happen to say to him, could you do me a favor? Could you get some water for my dog? He said, of course. He goes right in and gets it, and he comes back out, and I said, how old are you? He said, I'm 16. I said, what school do you go to? He says, Lynn English. But thank God I got a scholarship. I don't have to go there anymore. So I says, what do you mean? He says, well, it's kind of bad people there, and my parents didn't like me hanging out with them. So I, and he mentions this Catholic school. I cannot think of the name of it. If I heard it, I'd say, well, that's it. Kip Academy? No, no. St. John's Prep? Yeah. Okay. He, he, he got a scholarship St. John's Prep because he wants to get an education. So I said to him, where are you from? He said, well, I was born in here, but my father is from Mexico and my mother is Puerto Rican. So it took Mexico with Puerto Rico to bring this kid here. Now this is a kid who is working a, not a great job. He's dumping the garbage at a Dunkin' Donuts, probably helping out the family. And he is so thankful that he got a scholarship that he doesn't have to hang out with the wrong kind of people. Mm. You know, I tutored 
many kids at English high school this was said that, to my fit, that fit the definition, the description you're talking about. And I will say this. Every single one of those kids after school went to work at Dunkin' Donuts yeah. or other places, and they put in 40, 50 hours. Yeah. They worked hard. They were respectful yeah. and everything else. So I commend that young man. Yeah. And I commend English high school has done some yeoman work, and I can attest to this because I no longer teach it. I do substitute there occasionally. My own grandson is a student there. <coughs> they do a marvelous job, I can tell you, with the clientele and what they're supposed to deal with. There are problems everywhere, particularly in inner city schools. Yeah. We have had our problems. I'm not going to tell you otherwise. But it's not the system. Well, I shouldn't say that. It's definitely not... Let me put it this way. Storm, Tom Strangey, who's the principal of English High School, does a marvelous job. I can tell you that without any reservation. Yep. The teachers there are outstanding. I wouldn't go there if they weren't. I, would, I wouldn't go there. I wouldn't sub there if it was problematic. I've never had a problem there. Now, that's not to say that there aren't problems. That's not to say. I mean, I've heard my own grandson uh, at times talk about, you know, his disappointment at certain things, okay? So we have to do something in that category. We've got to clean up the images a little bit. That's true. There's no question about well, it. Well, three of my children but graduated from English. But isn't it, isn't it instructive so to I. you that a kid with the definition background that you're talking about had the wherewithal to get a scholarship to St. John's Prep through English High School, by the way, yeah, yeah. right? And going to make something of his life. That's yeah. a nice story, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Good, good kid. Yeah. Got, got water for my dog. Yeah, <laughs> on top of it. Yeah, I, I have found, personally, I'm, I'm a big fan of tech, too. You know that. I've always oh, yeah. Heard. I'm a huge fan of what they do down there, these kids. But backtracking it, what I was trying to allude to is these are the families that are settling in your city. Yes. These are the families that most of them probably should not have been allowed to settle in your city. And these are probably people that aren't even here legally. Well, the legal aspect is, we can discuss that. My, uh, the fact that families are settling is a good thing. As far as, yeah. I, would, I want more families. Mm -hmm. I want fathers yep. and mothers. Right. Families are very important. Mm -hmm. The problem is there's too much in our society that has nothing to do with immigration is we have too many people without fathers in the family. Oh, God, yes. Oh, you've got too many right. families with multiple fathers. In some instances. It's, yep. a, it's, it's a whole new world, sir. Yes, but it's the world that do we have to deal with. You know, it's, you, we can't go back and say, you know, the dinosaur was magnificent in his day or her day. They're no longer with us. Times change. Yep. So mm -hmm. you have to face the realities right. of today and whatever tomorrow. I, I enjoyed my upbringing. Right. Uh, yep. My grandkids, they have to deal with their own. Uh, my great-grandchild, soon to be, you know, that's a different world. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I don't have the answers mm -hmm. to it. What, what, what do you I think do you, know... Your grandchild, what, what do you think the world will be like for them in 20 years? It's it doesn't matter. It's impossible. Because I'm not going to be here, well, most likely. Yeah. God forbid. I hope I am. Uh, but it's their world to live in. But you know, Ralph, at one time, let me, let me, let me, let me finish it quickly. Because okay. we've got a minute. My dad was born in 1896. Right. Came to this country and he was 15 years old in 1912. And I said, but that's, there was no airplanes, uh -huh. there was no running water, there was no electricity, there were no automobiles to speak of, nothing. No, forget about the internet. And I remember saying to him in his advanced years about how good the good old days must have been. He looked at me and he said, what are you, crazy? <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. I said yeah. that, by the way, because I had a granddaughter born Saturday morning, Lucy. <laughs> Congratulations. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Might as well yeah. tell okay. So... Folks, remember one thing. Whatever you may think about what's wrong with today or the city of Lynn, it will correct itself at some point. We're not criticizing the city because we don't love the city or like the city. I criticized my kids when I thought they were doing wrong, yep. and my parents did the same to me. It's an act of love, actually. Right. On that note, we love you. see you next week. Have a nice holiday. See you all season. next week. <laughs>